Good afternoon and welcome to Armand Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium on the campus of Brockton High School in the City of Champions for this BCA Sports presentation of Brockton Boxers Football. My name is Peter Zimbor, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Miles Jackson, for what is sure to be an emotional afternoon of football as the Brockton Boxers host the Taunton Tigers in what is the first game Brockton High has played since the passing of legendary Brockton Boxers head coach Armand Colombo last weekend. Miles, Armin Colombo, a legendary head coach in the state of Massachusetts who retired in 2003 as the winningest head coach in Massachusetts high school football history, but a near constant presence on the sidelines for this Brockton Boxers team, even since his retirement as head coach in 2003 as his son Peter Colombo took the reins. And I think his presence on Brockton Boxers football is on every player from when he started in 1969 up until this present team we're seeing taking the field right now as the boxers are set to receive. Yeah, exactly. And during I heard during the wake that uh, the Brockton High players all came out with their jerseys on to uh, give their respects to the uh, Colombo family. So I'm sure it will be an emotional game, and hopefully Brockton will come on top. Interesting kick by the Taunton Tigers to begin this game. The Brockton unintended returner takes from about the 25 and will be taken down around the 40 yard line and that's where the Brockton Boxers offense will take over and as we mentioned head coach Peter Colombo has been the head coach for this Brockton high school team since the 2004 season his first year as head coach in that 04 season the Brockton Boxers won the Super Bowl defeating Everett in which, which was seen as an upset at the time between two of the Titans of Massachusetts Southeastern high school football. This is his first game as a head coach where his dad is not present for any advice. So we've got first and 10 for Brockton. They're gonna spot the ball at the 39 yard line. And up the middle goes number 17 for the boxers. That is Amik Watterson on the carry. The junior who came to Brockton from Tennessee early on in the season, maybe a gain of two, and that will bring up a second down and eight fourth coming for Brockton. Yeah, Peter, I remember, I believe me and you were partners um, doing the broadcasting when um, Peter Colombo came on as coach of the uh, Brockton High Boxers. So second down and eight for Brockton. Brockton coming off a loss to Franklin last week. Taunton coming off a win over Weymouth. Brockton going to go to the ground once again on the carry, taking it to about the 45-yard line. Uh, that would be number 12, Devin Forts. Yeah, and I believe today with the wind really blowing hard, it's a beautiful sunny day, but the wind is going to definitely pay, play a factor in this football game, so I, I expect to see a lot of running plays. We're going to call it third and six as they spot it a little closer than I think our stats guy originally thought they would. So third and six for Brockton. Two gains, uh, two rushing plays for two yards apiece respectively to begin this series with nine minutes and 39 seconds left to go here in the first quarter at Colombo Field. Shotgun formation for the boxes. Quarterback Norman opts to air it out, has a wide open receiver. That's going to be good for a first down as he connects with Ted Tessa for the first down into Taunton territory. And he was as uncovered as uncovered could be as you take a look at the replay right here just over the middle with no one within five yards of him in either direction. Yeah, you can see number seven made a saving tackle for Taunton. Otherwise, I believe he'd be going all the way to the house. So it's going to be first and ten for Brock, and the ball is spotted at the Taunton 43. Shotgun formation for the Bacchus. Once again, it worked very well for them the last play, and why not go back to that formation? This time they go to the ground, and it's Amik Watterson up the middle. Yeah, one of the keys today for the Brockton offense will be Brockton's offensive line. They've got to make some holes for their running backs because I, I guarantee most of the plays today will be going, will be doing the running attack for the boxes. So those uh, offensive linemen are going to have to step up and really push this Taunton Tiger defense back. I'm going to say a gain of a yard in that last play. This will be second down in nine. You know, it's hard to believe Pete, Peter, but uh, Coach Armand Colombo was only in his second year when I uh, was a freshman up here in 1970. And even back then, it, it, he still had his aura about him. We'll be sharing some good Armand Colombo stories throughout the course of this broadcast as Brocken goes to the ground once again up the middle for a fairly significant gain. That is Amik Watterson again, who's been the primary ball carrier for the boxes thus far in the game against Taunton. No huddle situation for Brockton. They're going to go right back to the line, and this is going to bring up third down and two. 
And it's Watterson up the middle again, and I think that's going to be good for a first down. We'll see how they spot it, but I think he got it. Yeah, Watterson with the nice e effort to push ahead to get that first down. You'll see it right here on the replay, the effort by Watterson. He gets hit right there, but he still pushes forward and uh, gets that first down. So we're going to have first down and 10 as we come out from the replay for Brockton. They're moving the ball very efficiently downfield, and we do have a whistle. I think we're going to have a timeout called by Brockton, and that is the case. So seven minutes and 34 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Brockton moving the ball effectively downfield with scoreless here at Armin Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium. And Armin Colombo is such a legend. This place was already called Rocky Marciano Stadium after the legendary undefeated heavyweight champ. Who was his cousin. Who was his cousin. And we said, you know what? We need to do something to recognize Armin Colombo while he's still alive, no less. Yes, yes. And the field was named in his honor. First and 10 for Brockton. Ball at the 32-yard line of the Taunton Tigers. No wideouts. Three men in the backfield. Wishbone formation. Norman, the quarterback, he is going to hand the ball off to a running back who's got plenty of room. That is big number 36 for the boxers, Derek Williams on the carry. That's good for a first down. Yeah, another shoestring tackle. I believe by the safety coming up, you'll see it right about No huddle there. once again. No huddle once again. They're not letting the defense set. They're not letting the production team set. They're going right <laughs> up the middle once again with Derek Williams. And this Brockton boxers team is just running it down the gut of Taunton the entire game thus far, body shot after body shot. Yeah, and, and back in the 70s, this was uh, typical Brockton High football um, that Armin Colombo um, ran, was basically power football. And once in a while, he would pass the football, but back then in the uh, early 70s, it was power football. That was a gain of eight, so it's going to be second down and two forthcoming for Brockton. Second down and two with six minutes and 45 seconds left to glow, and the clock continuing to tick away. And that is going to be Amik up the middle, Amik Watterson. And that'll be good for a boxer's first down. Yeah, you can see on that formation, boxers spread their offense um, wide, one wide on, on the right side, one on the left. Left one man in the backfield. I believe that was the first time we saw one man in the backfield on this drive. First down and goal for the Brockton boxers now. Clock continuing to tick away. You know, this game being on a Saturday afternoon instead of originally as it was scheduled a Friday night last night, which it was postponed due to A, weather, and I think it was also fitting with uh, Thursday being the wake of Armand Colombo and yesterday being the funeral. It has a certain nostalgic feel on a Saturday afternoon as a lot of those powerhouse Brockton High School football teams that Armand Colombo coached uh, existed before lights were put in here at the stadium and a touchdown by the Brockton Boxers here in the first quarter, right up the middle, rushing touchdown. And that is Amik Watterson. Yeah, that was nice, nice drive by the Boxers. You'll see it right here on the replay. Nice effort by Watterson, number 17. He's been a go-to guy on this drive. Bounces off his line and goes over to his left and punches it in for a touchdown. Extra point attempt forthcoming. Carlin's Gene. Kick is up, and that is through the up rates, and good. So 7 nothing. Brockton Boxers strike first. Five minutes and 48 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. And like I was saying, it wasn't until the mid-90s they put the lights in here at Marciano Stadium. Saturday afternoon football was the norm for quite some time here in Brockton. Yes, quite some time. It was uh, afternoon football. And I'm sure uh, Coach Armin Colombo was smiling down real early on this football game because I'm sure he's saying that's the way you play Brockton High football, power football. 316 wins for Armin Colombo in the course of his illustrious high school football career, both at Brockton High, where he was the coach from 69 to 2003, and also before that at Archbishop Williams in that's Braintree. Right. That's right. And nine Super Bowl titles during the course of his career. And perhaps the most poignant quote about his legacy that I read this week came from former Enterprise sports writer Bob Buckley when he said that everyone's going to remember all the Division I college players that played as a result of what they learned at Brockton High under the tutelage of Armand Colombo. But his real legacy is all those kids who would have had no shot at college otherwise who got to D2 and D3 schools to play football. And that's probably equal part his legacy, if not more so, than all the accolades in the football field. Exactly. As you, Coach Columbo really cared about his players and what they were going to do after 
um, attending Brockton High School. So he definitely communicated with the players, the schools, to make sure, especially these guys that uh, had something going for them, make sure they get in the right program. Bit of a windy day this afternoon at Colombo Field, so a holder is brought in to allow the kickoff to take place. Returned by Taunton will be brought to about the 27-yard line, and that's where we'll see the Taunton Tigers offense for the first time as the Brockton Boxers offense simply never took a backward step that entire drive, and they lead 7-0 with 5.43 left to go in the first quarter. Having not called the game this season, I was told by people their offense has struggled. Well, it didn't seem like they struggled <laughs> on that drive whatsoever. Well, you know, the, their running game has been pretty good all year, but their problem was their passing game. Um, they just haven't got it together in the passing department, and it really hurt them this year. So uh, it's just gl I'm just glad to see that the running game is uh, on par early in this football game. They were firing all centers, passing and running on that first drive. Shotgun formation for the Taunton Tigers, and the quarterback will be on the keeper. The quarterback for Taunton is numero 12, Noel Leonard. Yeah, and you're right, Peter. I totally forgot about that one little short slant in pass that uh, the quarterback threw for Brockton just to keep the defense honest. Second down and eight now for Taunton. They're going with a quick to no huddle situation just like Brockton. We've got some urgency from both teams in this game. Yes. And Noah Leonard is looking over at a sideline about something. I don't know. I don't, and I tell you what, the 30-second clock is winding down. I was almost wondering if there's some trickery and they were going to snap the ball with him saying, hey, coach, or something like that. Leonard looking down the sideline. Has an open receiver, and I don't think he believe he caught it in bounds, no, he and he didn't. did not. That's going to be incomplete, which is a shame for Taunton because he was as wide open as wide open can be as we take a look at the replay. Yeah, that was a nice catch over there. You see the quarterback getting out of the pocket, telling his man to go downfield, and you can see right there it was a nice catch. It was just his feet were out of bounds. So let's bring up a third down. And right now the wind is to the back to the Taunton Tigers offense, so if, if you're going to throw, throw while the wind is to your back. And he will keep the ball for the quarterback keeper once again. He's got the first down and more as he gets to about midfield. And he's taken out of bounds. And they're going to flag the Brockton Boxers for yeah. that's a correct flag. He certainly, yeah, there was no excuse for that. Yeah, he certainly, uh, after he'd already pushed him out of bounds, yeah. finished the job of tackling him well out of bounds. Yeah, and he kind of twisted his ankle in the process Why he was wet way out of bounds, whistle already blew, and he just continued on. You'll see it right there, right there he twists it. And he's, I mean, come on, there was no, no excuse for that, no need for it. So that is going to push Taunton even further into Brockton territory as the quarterback got it to about midfield, and now they're going to bring it all the way up to the Brockton 36-yard line, so a significant penalty as Taunton is moving the ball down the field about as effectively as Brockton did here in the first quarter. Yeah, that was uh, Josiah Azar. He's a junior, so he's going to have to keep his emotions in check. No need for any uh, dumb penalties like that. To the ground goes Taunton. That is Trilton Savala on the carry. This will bring forth a second down. I'm going to say a gain of two, second down and eight. Maybe second down and seven. Three yard gain, second down and seven for a ton. And once again, more or less no huddle. And though they're going no huddle, what is weird here is that the quarterback for a ton does slow up the pace by looking at his coaching staff for instructions, but they're not huddling. Over the middle, and he's got an open man, connects. And that is going to be good for a first down inside the 10-yard line. So it'll be first and goal for the Taunton Tigers as Noah connects with number 44, Manning. And we got a first and goal situation now. Good job by the Brockton D-line of essentially allowing that ball carry to go nowhere. Three minutes left to go here 
in the opening quarter. Seven nothing boxers on top. Yeah, that was a shoestring um, touchdown scoring um, tackle the play before. I believe number 30, number 35 for the uh, Brockton defense. to the ground, Taunton goes once again. Ball carry gets it to about the six yard line, third and goal forthcoming. Yeah, good tackle there by uh, number 12, the cornerback for the boxes. See, uh, Taunton's offense is uh, spread out for most of these this drive, they've been spread out. Looks like they got three wide receivers, two on the right, one on the left. And like you said, um, Peter, Quick count, but the uh, quarterback takes up about 10 seconds looks, at least looking over to his sideline for the play. And over the middle, intended for number one for Taunton. Yep. Fourth down. And Aaron White, that ball came right to Aaron White. He was close on the coverage, and that ball was zipped in there. It kind of surprised him, but he's, I'm sure he felt I should have had that. As we take a look at the replay, which set up this goal line drive for Taunton. But now with fourth and goal, Taunton is going to bring in their kicking unit to try to get on the board. And the kick is up, and it is good. So 7-3, to three, Brockton still on top, but Taunton is able to get themselves on the board. Yeah, it was a nice drive by Taunton. Running and passing, more passing than anything. But uh, they, again, they had the backs to the to the wind, so that was uh, that was smart to. Uh, if you're going to throw it, throw it while the the um, the wind is blowing at your back. If you're on offense, and I think that it was a good sign by the Brockton defense to hold them to three once they got inside the ten yard line, uh, following that big pass from Noah Leonard to number 44 Quinn for Taunton, which set them up for. Seemingly, with the way things have been going, uh, an opportunity to tie the game with Brockton, but no mas. Yeah, yeah, good, good point there, Peter. On um, the the um, Brock boxer defense bent a little bit, but they didn't break for that touchdown. One minute, 33 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Ton set to kick the ball off to the Brockton boxers. Peter Zimbor and Miles Jackson calling the action in the Farley press box here at Colombo Field at Marciano Stadium. And Brockton's going to return this from about the 15. And the return man is going to get it to about the 32, 33 yard line. That is number 26 for the Brockton Boxers, Noah Lau on the return, the sophomore. Brockton will start at their own 33 yard. It's a beautiful autumn day. It's sunny. It's just the wind is really playing, a, um, playing some havoc down there on the football field. It's windy out there, it was rainy before the game, but has been fine since we've kicked off. You can see the running back really pushing it, using a lot of effort to try to move that football. So second down on the horizon for Brock, and second down and seven. I formation for the boxers. There's one wide out to the far side of the field, the top of your screen. And up the middle goes number 17 for Brockton, Amik Watterson. An interesting, uh, Devontae Medley, the sophomore, was in at quarterback for Brockton. That is interesting. 
Like we got a football player down on the field. You'll see the replay. Maybe we can see what happened. Who right there? I can't see his number. Number five, maybe. Well, they call medical personnel to the field immediately down at the 45-yard line. So seven to three, your score, Brockton, on top. 42 seconds left to go in the opening quarter. as we're happy to bring you this game on Brockton Community Access Television, hoping that the youngster for the Brockton Boxers down on the field right now being tended to by medical personnel for both teams is okay. They were holding one of their legs in some clear pain, but hopefully uh, it's nothing more than a bump or a bruise and they're all right and they can walk off. Yeah, possibly he could have twisted his knee a little bit. It is number five for the boxes. So that would be Jamil Atkinson. And he is going to be helped up by some teammates, but is uh, walking off unassisted on his own power, which is a good sign. Hopefully it was just momentary pain, and he'll be able to walk it off, like they say, and get back in there at some point. But thankfully, it uh, doesn't seem to be any serious damage done. Third down and four as the clock resumes Third here at Marciano Stadium. And once again, it is Devontae Medley, the sophomore in at quarterback for Brockton. It was all Norman at QB on that first series, which went perfectly. Medley getting some snaps here. Medley looks like he's trying to pass and has an open man. That is big number 87 into Taunton territory. Reminiscent of Ben Coates, that is Malik Kiernan. Yeah, you'll see it right here on the replay. Quarterback, very cool, a lot of pressure. Steps up and just kind of floats it right there. Beautiful pass. Floats it between two defenders yes. to the six foot four, 240 pounder. At the end of the first quarter, it is Brock. And the first quarter comes to a conclusion, and it is seven to three. Brockton on top with 11 minutes to go in the first half as we'll be beginning the second quarter momentarily. Yeah, it looks like, uh, what's his name is back out there? Norman, number 11. So maybe um, Coach Colombo and his offensive uh, coaching staff throwing a little trickery in there. I'm mixing up a mixing little bit QB up. position. Yes. I think they're two for two on passing attempts today. And uh, I tell you what, the way the passing game's been going all year, that, that's a plus. My best memory of the Brockton Boxers taking on the Taunton Tigers was many years ago when they were unveiling the brand new stadium at Taunton High School. And whoever scheduled this game, I apologize to them if they're watching, but it was not the wisest decision for that Taunton team to play Brockton in their big unveiling of their brand new stadium, which they wanted to be a positive thing with everyone in the community getting out, because Brockton just trampled them. Yeah. First and 10 for the boxers now in Taunton territory, now going from right to left on your TV screen as we switch sides for the second quarter. And Norman hands the ball off. And oh, that's a first down and a hell of a lot more inside the 20 to the 15, inside the 10, inside the five. Can he go all the way? He's trying to inch to the end zone and he almost does, does he? Does he? And he's gonna be taken down at about the one. What a run by Amik Watterson. First and goal, fourth coming yeah. for the Brockton Boxers. Check this out on replay. Yeah, he went right around the end and right there is where he really broke it. Then he put the speed on outrunning the linebackers. And here's where the power comes yeah, in. Yeah, He's exactly. not going down. So he used power, speed, and elusiveness on that play to get down to the one-yard line. Uh, Meek Watterson, have yourself a play. First and goal for the boxers. And the box is looking to put seven more on the board, Woo! and Watterson goes up the middle. Wow. This time he's stuffed at the goal line. You can't win them all, Amik. You get three more chances. It's going to be second and goal. That's a slight loss. That might be the first backward step Brockton has taken in this right game there, offensively. Number, yeah, number 32, linebacker T. Turner, middle linebacker, senior, met him behind the line of scrimmage. No soup for you, says Turner. <laughs> Shout out to Newby Rateau, who loved the Seinfeld references when he was commentating. Second and goal inside the five for Brockton. Nine minutes and 42 seconds left to go in the first half. 
and Norman on the quarterback keeper right up the middle. That's good for a touchdown. Boxers up 13 to three, nine minutes and 33 seconds left to go in the first half. And Norman on the quarterback keeper just barges up the middle and enters the end zone on his feet. And it's taken down once he's in the end zone, but nevertheless, six points for Brock and they'll bring in the place kicker for the point after touchdown. That's Gene once again. And it looks like he, when he scored the touchdown, like he gestured up high towards um, Rocky Marciano, the statue, like this one's for you, Armin. Maybe when Norman was out, maybe there was some type of equipment problem or something. Because he went right back in there after a couple of um, snaps. Whatever the case may be, both quarterbacks we've seen take snaps of the boxes thus far in this game. Very effective. Very effective. Extra point attempt is good. 14 to 3. Brockton on top. Nine minutes and 33 seconds left to go in the first half. Yeah, that was a nice job by Colleen's Jean, the kicker, to um because the snap was a little high. The uh, holder got it down, and Gene went really quickly into his um, kicking mode just as the Tigers were ready to pounce. <coughs> and uh, he, made the, he made the extra point. Talking about the effect that Armand Colombo had in every Brockton Boxers team from 1969 on forward up until this current team we see in the field now. One of my favorite Armand Colombo stories I've ever heard was told to me before the game by the current statistician for Brockton High School, Brian Lynch, who played at Brockton High. He said in the right before the 1987 Super Bowl where Brockton played at Woburn at the old Foxborough Stadium, they could hear the Woburn coaching staff firing their players up in the locker room next to them. And it was rowdy, it was raucous, and the coach very enthusiastically said to his players, we're going to war. And he said at that moment, Armin Colombo very calmly said to his players, do you know what happens when people go to war? People die. <laughs> and Brockton went out and blew out Woburn 28 to nothing in the Super Bowl and won. There you go. So the calmness of Armin Colombo in that moment, more effective than the rah-rah nature of the Woburn coaching staff. According to Brian Lynch, I was not there. This was his, his anecdote, not mine. Here's number 18, Hanks. Taunton will start their own 33-yard line, first down. And we got 9.27 left in the second quarter, so the, with the running attack, some games moving right along. So first and 10 for the Taunton Tigers. Ball placed at their own 33 yard line. They got man in motion and that will become a ball carrier and he'll pick up a gain of maybe two yards on the play bringing up what should be a second down and eight for Taunton. Yeah it was a nice pursuit by the right side of that defensive uh, defensive team of Brockton's there to come in and it looked like it might have been getting ready to do something and they came right in and converged on the running back. Defensive line for Brockton, going to do a good job not allowing the ball carrier to get too far for Taunton, bringing up a third down. Does manage to get a yard or two out of the situation. This will bring up third down and five with 8.20 left to go in the first half. Brockton up 14 to three. No 
Foreman on the quarterback keeper. And he's taken down after maybe a yard or two. That was Noah Leonard, excuse me, not Norman. Noah Leonard for the Taunton Tigers, the quarterback keeper. Fourth down, and I think that the Taunton Tigers are going to be forced to punt the football away. Yeah, nice job by Aaron um, Rodgers right here. It's going to be Aaron White comes in and makes the tackle. Aaron Rodgers plays tomorrow night, Miles. <laughs> yeah, yes they do, and I'm looking forward to it. Fourth down, and it'll be a punting situation for the Taunton Tigers. Timeout called by the Brockton Boxers. So as we mentioned the name Armin Colombo, probably 10 times to one to head coach Peter Colombo in the course of this game. Uh, head coach Peter Colombo, the son of Armin Colombo, told me prior to today's game that his message to the players in the locker room before they came out to play Taunton today would be about how the legend of his father coaching football here at Brockton High School didn't necessarily start off so gloriously. In 1969, his first game as head coach for the Brockton Boxers, Brockton was absolutely dismantled by New Bedford. That year, Brockton won simply three games in 1969. His second year as head coach for Brockton in 1970 was the first of the many undefeated teams we would see here at Brockton High School and the many first of many Super Bowl teams we would see here at Brockton High School. And I think the message is things don't always start off the way you want, but if you dust yourself off, exactly. get back up, get off the canvas and win, I will be forgotten, and that's what people remember. And this season has quite frankly not gone the way the Brockton Boxers would want to, but I think that they're planting seeds for something next year and beyond uh, for hopefully some more glorious years of storied Brockton Boxers football. Yeah, I can remember uh, as a freshman in 70, um, like I said, they went undefeated, and there was no, per se, Super Bowl in Massachusetts at the time. So his team went down. So they took the whole team down to Florida, and they I forget which Super Bowl it was, but it was a Super Bowl where Dallas Cowboys played the uh, – Baltimore Colts. We're going to have some flags down as there was some movement on the line. I think it was against Brockton. We'll see what the official call is. It is a false start against Brockton, which will push them back for first and 15. We say Super Bowl, but the actual Super Bowl is only a few years into existence at this right. point. But it was, um, it was it was a great football team with Ken McAfee, All-American. All and went the rest to play of that Notre team, Dame, correct? He went to play in Notre Dame. Matter of fact, Ken McAfee was in, we were the same class, and we both uh, was in the. Ooh, nice jump there. Number seventeen, right there once again, Amik oh, Watterson. Oh, but and uh, loose football. Yeah, um, Ken was me and Ken were in the same uh, science class for three years straight, and Ken McAfee, just an, a big oh, awesome presence, but he was a very nice young yeah. man, and. Um, just went out there and did his job. Brockton gets back four of the five yards they lost on the penalty, so this will be second down on 11. Last I heard, Ken McAfee, is he practicing dental work? Yes, yes. Up here in Massachusetts. Norman was looking for a well-covered receiver in at number 81 for the Brockton boxes, Adamola Filet but he was well covered by the defenders for a ton incomplete. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. I don't know if number 17 is running back was blinding him, but uh, that was not a good pass. So third and 11, six minutes and 19 seconds left to go in the first half. Boxers up 14 to three, as you see at the bottom of your screen. Norman back to pass once again. And well-placed football, good for a first down as he connects with number 88, Navon Reed. Ooh, that was a nice catch. Norman in the pocket, stays there, and look at that catch. He went up high for it. I haven't seen a number 11 hit a number 88 that effectively since Bledsoe to Terry Glenn. Oh. So first and 10, Brockton in Taunton territory at the Taunton 43-yard line. Outside of that one incompletion we saw two plays ago, the passing game has been fairly effective today, Miles. Yeah, best passing game I've seen since the um, first two games of the season. Number 
Norman hands the ball off. And we do have a flag on the play, but still on his feet is Watterson as he gets it almost to the 20-yard line, but there was a flag around the 40-yard line. Yeah, most likely holding. And you would be correct with that, holding against Brockton, so this one's coming back. Yeah, anytime you see a running play and you see flags being thrown, most likely it'll be holding. Particularly when the ball carry makes another 20 yards. <laughs> You'll see it here. Couldn't quite see it, but I'm sure it was out there. There's a lot of grabbing. So this will be a first down, and oh, I got to do math on this one. The ball's going to be at the 49-yard line. First down by what, 16, 17 yards? They got 18 on the scoreboard. First and 18 will go with for Brockton back in their own territory at the 49-yard line. And to get a first down, they have to get to about the 32, so 33, yeah. Loose ball. Taunton is indicating they've recovered. They're jumping up. They're excited. And it appears they have good reason to be as they'll be getting the ball at midfield. Fumble on the play, turnover, Taunton ball. Yeah, let's see where it happened. Right there when he was hit, the ball squirted loose. You can see number seven jump on it. Once again, great job by uh, Brockton Cheerleaders. So first and 10 for Taunton. Ball now at the Taunton Tigers 49-yard line. Yeah, with 4.53 left in the second quarter. They go to the ground. Ball carry is going to get to about the 45-yard line. That's good for a gain of six. It'll be second down and four on its way. You see right there, a little hole opening up for the uh, running back on the left-hand side, right between guard and center. using the running game a little bit here. That'll be good for a first, first and 10 for the Tigers. The ball spotted at the Boxers 40 yard line. First and 10 Taunton, three minutes and 39 seconds left to go. In the first half. And ball carry is going to be stuffed after about four yards on the carry. Depending if they give him the forward progress or not, we'll see where they spot the ball in a moment. Yeah, normally, Peter, um, we're used to Saturday football down in New Bedford when there's a away game. New Bedford um, always plays their games. Well, one of my best memories of Saturday afternoon football here at Brockton High is the early to mid-90s when Brockton was number one and New Bedford was ranked number two in the state, or maybe it was vice versa. Nevertheless, it was one and two against each other on a Saturday afternoon. And this place was absolutely packed, standing room only. And people weren't standing because they were socializing. They were standing because there was simply no place to sit. The consequences of winning or losing this game, people deemed to be that significant. Ball carry number 24 on the far side of the field for Taunton will be taken down for a loss, third down on its way. Well, nice job there by the right side of that defense, which uh, resulted in a loss of a few yards. So third and seven for Taunton. As we're coming down to the two minute warning if they elect to blow the whistle for that. And I guess they don't do that in high school football anymore. I'm fine with it. Let the clock run. Let it run. <laughs> <laughs> Pass.
pass over the middle, incomplete for Taunton. This brings up a fourth down. So good job by the Brockton Boxers defense yeah. of holding what will appear to be a situation where I guess it's likely Taunton will punt following the turnover yeah, that was at a midfield. Nice coverage by number 32, Aaron White for Brockton, getting in there and um, possibly deflecting that pass or the receiver just couldn't quite hang on or get to it because of Aaron White. Now I said likely they would punt, but not certain. It looks like they're yeah. sending the quarterback in to go for it on fourth and seven, which in Brockton territory, down by 10, I suppose not the worst idea in the world. No. And they're gonna line up in a shotgun formation with five wide receivers. I guess the coach for Taunton has been feeling pretty good about um, Taunton's offense, the way they've been moving the football down the field. Well, not too good about it. He calls yeah, a timeout. Time he, wants, he wants to rethink it. <laughs> he wants to rethink this feel-good yes. feeling he has right now. Exactly. 14-3, to three, Brockton on top. One minute and 49 seconds left to go in the first half. It was a quarterback keeper, courtesy of Michael Norman, which made it that score early on here in the second quarter. And then getting things started for the box this afternoon, it was Amik Watterson with a, with a touchdown run in the first quarter. 14-3 Brockton on top, a minute 49 left to go in the first half. Peter Zimborn and Miles Jackson calling the action here high atop Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium. So fourth down, they'll go for it. Still same shotgun formation. This time they go with four wideouts instead of five. And oh, Drop wide it. open receiver into his hands. Unable to catch the football. Turnover on downs. Brockton will take over. Yeah, if he would have caught that, that would have been a first down. You'll see it right here, but he just couldn't hold on to it. He caught, caught a spot in the defense that was uh, open. Just couldn't hold on to it. You got to hold on to those. First and 10, Brockton Boxers. The ball is spotted at their own 37 yard line. They've got a minute 44 to work with before they head to the locker room for halftime. Now Brockton's got the win to their back. Let's see if he tries. He's got an uh, open wide offense. Everybody's spread out. Norman back to pass, five wide outs. And that's Watterson on the reception. He gets to about the 49-yard line, just shy of midfield. That'll be good for a first down, however. Yeah, nice takedown there by Taunton, number six, who was covering him. You see, you see Watterson crossing the um, defense right there in the middle of the field. And he is uh, a shoestring tackle. Norman looking to pass once again. Wide open receiver, good for a first down once again. This time it's number 18, it's Trey Chula Hall. Chula Hall for Boxer first down. So I was told before today's game that they struggle on offense and don't have much of a passing game. I think I was given wrong information based on what I've seen. <laughs> I haven't called the game all year until yeah. now, and they're looking good. First and 10, Brockton. You brought us some good luck. What the Brockton Boxers passing game, some good luck. And we've got a timeout called by Taunton with a buck 13 on the clock. But besides the good luck, I think Brockton's, Brockton's um, offense is just pretty fired up here and um, motivated, and they want to do a good job for Coach Peter, Peter Colombo and his dad, Coach Armin Colombo, who's shining down with the sunshine on um, Armin Colombo Field. So first and 10 boxes, they have wide outs to the far side of the field. That's the strong side. Uh, they're going to go to the ground, however, taking it to the near side. It's Watterson, gets past one defender, gets past the second defender inside the 20, and he'll go out of bounds around the 15-yard line inside the red zone. First and 10 forthcoming for Brockton. They are playing some inspired football this afternoon, Miles. Yes, they are, and Watterson is really leading the pack there. Nice pass by Norman. You can see Watterson just using the field nicely knowing where to run using his blockers and I'm sure this is a very uplifting spirited game for the boxes they're playing well and they're motivated out there this is a confidence booster this team is looking very good Michael Norman very good 
as the field general at quarterback, Amik Watterson, having himself an excellent game, and they're spreading the ball around to many different wide receivers. We've got first and ten for the boxers, four wideouts. One man in the backfield, and another wide receiver on a reception this afternoon. He'll get it into the end zone for a touchdown, Ted Tessa. Well, that was a nice nice pass by uh, Norman. You'll see, one, no fear. Once he throws the ball, he's hit. And um, his receiver catches the ball and does the rest. So Michael Norman with both a passing and a rushing touchdown on the day so far. And we're still in the first half, 20-3 Brockton on top, 57 seconds left to go. And we are going to see a point after touchdown attempt by Carlin's Gene for the third time today. He's two for two in the afternoon. Yeah, he's been pretty steady all year. He's been reliable. He's missed a few, but he's for the most part, he's had a good season kicking point afters. Make it three for three. 21 to three, Brockton on top, 57 seconds left to go in the first half and for them to get the ball back turnover on downs with under two minutes ago that was an excellent drive couldn't ask for anything better you'll see here on the replay again watch the quarterback just as he unloads the football he's going to get hit now tessa just steps back a little bit waits the reception and it's at least five yards before any receiver is really in any position at all to touch him. If we take a look at that replay once again, who is supposed to be covering him? Yeah. Good look by Norman to realize that he was there for a short, quick, easy pass. And excellent efforts by Tessa once he did get the ball to move it downfield into the end zone. Yeah, Tessa really didn't run a route. He just took a couple of steps beyond the uh, line of scrimmage and waited for the football. I think he took two steps back to wait yeah. for the football at first. We'll take a look at it again in a moment if we can as the boxers kick the ball off to Taunton. And unique kick, but with less than a minute to go in the first half, they want to get a little unique with how they do things. Let's take a look at it right here. Tessa, yeah, two steps did. back. Two steps back. There it is. And several yards away was the nearest defender who was number four for Taunton, and he didn't have the manpower to take him down at that point. 21-3, to three, Brockton on top. Looking good, Brockton, looking good. Well, Brockton has success with a drive which ends up in a touchdown on short notice. Can Ton do the same thing? They have not been as effective as Brockton here in the first half. They got a few yards there. This will bring up a second down and five. Yeah, you can see Ton has a good size offensive line. It's just that the Brockton's defense has just been doing a good job of um, – Rolling off the tackles, I mean rolling off the blocks and making the play. This could be the last play of the first half. Not too much urgency for the Taunton Tigers and the ball carry taken down for a loss. And I don't think there's gonna be much urgency for them to get another snap off as we have, well, the clock stops for some reason, we got a timeout. Timeout called by Taunton. I take back my comment about urgency, I suppose. Well, I mean, it's kind of surprising. They run, have a running play, and they call a timeout. I could see of a passing play, and they move the ball up the field a little bit, and they call a timeout, maybe can get a little bit closer. But one only knows what's going on in the mind of a head coach of a high school football team. Head coach Brad Sidwell for the Taunton Tigers, formerly the head coach for Franklin but has been with Taunton for the past three years. Spoke to him prior to today's game. At this time last week, it was not known that Brockton and Taunton would be playing each other today as a result of the newly formed MIAA schedule. Now, if I had this right, Taunton lost in the playoffs and uh, Brockton lost in the playoffs. So, so neither, neither team has any shot at a Super yeah. Bowl, yes. Shotgun formation for the Tigers. A bit of a low snap, and the quarterback will keep it and he'll go out of bounds just shy of the 40 and that'll stop the clock or it won't stop the clock he was in bounds or they will stop the clock so basically this is a consolation game from the playoffs 
so they can get some reps in, and then they'll have a few weeks off, and then they'll play the Thanksgiving Day game. Absolutely, more or less. Offhand, do you know if the uh, Thanksgiving Day game is here, or is it in Bridgewater? Uh, it'll be against the Bridgewater Random Trojans, and I believe this year, I don't know, it's worth a Google search at halftime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clock stops with a minute, uh, second left to go, excuse me, here in the first half, and it'll be first and 10 for the Taunton Tigers. So this will unquestionably be the final play of the first half. As a crew reminds me, don't discount the opportunity for a penalty from the offense. We have to replay it down. All right, without certainty, this should be the final play of the first half. Second down and 10 for the Taunton Tigers. Shotgun formation, four wideouts, one man in the backfield for Taunton. And that one man will be the ball carrier, and he's not going to get very far. So that'll do it for the first half of play. Brockton on top, 21-3, to playing some very inspired football this afternoon and looking very efficient all facets of the football against the Taunton Tigers, offensively, defensively, and special teams. I don't think there's any glaring criticism of this Brockton Boxers team you can make. No, I, I'm going to focus on the offense. I'm really um, proud the way they come out here and played on this beautiful sunny day. Uh, the quarterback, Norman, has been doing a great job passing the football, and his receivers are catching the football. But the man of the hour in this first half is Watterson. Yes, Amik Watterson having himself a fine first half as the Brockton Boxers are on top over the Taunton Tigers, 21 to three. Peter Zimborn, Miles Jackson calling the action here for Brockton Community Access. We're gonna step aside for a quick breather when we return second half action of football. Boxers lead Taunton 21 to three. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I surrender, I surrender. All right, pal. Get ready for the day, buddy. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Do we have a gun? What's up? Do we have a gun? Why do you ask that, kiddo? Can I play with it? No, no, absolutely not. It's not a toy, you know that. Do I? I bet it looks like one. Yeah, well, it's not. Anyway, I need it to protect you, your sister and mom. From what? From bad guys, like on TV. But what about the eight kids who get shot every day by mistake? Their daddies probably thought they were safe too. Where'd you hear that? TV. Yeah, well, maybe we don't believe everything we hear on TV. Where do you keep it? <laughs> it's hidden. I bet it's on the top shelf of the closet, under your sweatshirts. Is it loaded? It's not. I, I keep the bullets. In the boots with the red laces, and the chest beside the bed? I haven't found them yet, but I'm sure I can. You always told me to be curious. Remember when I found my Christmas gift? I'm a good climber, you know. No. No, that's not what I meant. Look, I, I need to be ready if someone breaks in. What about when it's just me and Mom? You taught me to be brave. I could use a gun to protect her. No, Justin, I promise. I'll teach you how to handle a gun when you're old enough. And what if I don't make it to old enough? I could get bullied and decide it's too much for me. It would be so easy with our gun. Our gun? No, buddy. My gun. But it is our gun in our home. Happens all the time. I'll make sure that doesn't happen. I'm always here for you. But Dad, you're not always here.
you go. Thank you. Thank you. surprise you really quickly. My friend? Yeah. My friend. <laughs> okay. Hey Shannon, I'm here. It's me. What's up, Pelvis? <laughs> it's me, Sarah Lee. I just wanted to tell you I love you. And you mean the world to me, honestly. I was bullied for four years in middle school. And these girls... <laughs> They would say the meanest things ever. I met you, and when I smiled, you said you had the greatest smile, and it meant so much to me. You know, I was a jerk a lot of times, and I didn't really treat or say things that were, you know, the best. It got to a point with my eating disorder. They were like, you have to make a decision whether to eat or you can't come back to school. You just sat there and you listened and you gave me advice. I've never had someone who um, who wanted to like hear what I've had to say. Because of you, I felt more comfortable and I felt welcome being at school, being the new kid, because no one else came up to me the way you did. I do know what you do for me. Like I do not ignore it. It's it's being recorded in my brain. It's it's in there. Because without you, I want to be the person I am today. Very <laughs> <Pretty> sweet. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, Caitlin. <laughs> Did you know that you had such a big impact on her life? I knew that just by... <laughs> Being nice to people, I could have an impact, but not that much. Like, I didn't know that those kinds of words would be so impactful on her. So when you have the opportunity to tell somebody how much they mean to you, you need to tell them so that they can keep doing it for other people. Back at you here for second half action at Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium as the Brockton Boxers are set to kick off to the Taunton Tigers to begin the second half, leading 21 to three. And beautiful booming kick taken from the 10 yard line by Taunton and the return man will be taken down just shy of the 35 yard line. So good kick and good return for the Taunton Tigers as the Brockton Boxers hope to continue on here in the second half what was a very very good first half uh, on all sides of the football, offensively, defensively, special teams. Uh, two touchdowns for quarterback Michael Norman, one rushing the football, one passing the football to Ted Tessa. Amik Watterson has had himself a fantastic game to this point, rushing the football. And defensively, they've held Taunton to just three points, including forcing a turnover on downs, amongst other things. They're just looking very good out there, Miles. Yeah, the momentum definitely in that first half was all Brockton. And hopefully they can carry it on into the second half. So first and 10 for the Taunton Tigers. And the tradition of the Taunton quarterback seemingly, I don't know what's going on, some guy running across the field. And they're going to let them run across the field before they resume play. I don't know what's <laughs> happening here. All right, he's made it to the other side of the field. I think he was late coming out of the locker room for Taunton. 
He was a guy that holds up the uh, the down marker. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, he's needed. He's needed. Well, actually, it looks like he helped the uh, the down marker guy. So, quarterback keeper for Taunton gets to about the 35 yard line, maybe a tad more, and second down on the horizon. Probably about a second and three or four, depending on where they spotted. No, no, second and five. Second down and five. Taunton, no huddle. Quarterback keeper, and he's going to get maybe a yard or two. Well, that was the first uh, quick offense. You'll see they did the quick offense, and it was no looking over at the coaches. They knew exactly what to do. Quarterback keeper. It's like third down, about two. Third and two for Taunton. 10.05 left to go here in the third quarter. As they go to a huddle, which has not always been the case in this game. Nice tackle by Brockton's number 58, Amanda Walker Jr., the captain. Yeah, nice job right there. He broke right through the block. And that brings up a fourth and short, and it will be a punting situation for the Taunton Tigers. I think that Amanda Walker Jr. exhibiting the effectiveness that this Brockton Boxers team has exhibited on the defensive side of the football in that one play alone. Yeah, the defense is really done a great job containing Taunton ever since that first um, possession by Taunton. Very short punt. And a very smart play by number 12. Yeah, Devin Forts on a unique return. That was like a 30 yard punt maybe. It takes it from the 50 to about the 42. So it'll be first and 10 for Brockton. Yeah, great awareness by Forts, Fortes. Broxton's got great field position to start off this, uh, their first possession in this second half with 8.54 on the clock. This would be a beautiful way for the box to begin the second half of play if they can score on this drive. They scored in their first drive of the first half. Norman back to pass and just out of reach of the intended receiver. And he's looking for a flag as he was knocked down after the ball was in. Let's see it right here. Yeah, that maybe should have been a flag. That possibly could have been. If I could see why uh, uh, Brock Box's side of the um, field was a little bit uh, upset that no flag was called. Sten Bruno was the intended receiver. Second down and a 10 now for the boxers. And Watterson on the carry. And he's going to pick up a few yards on the carry. A few more yards than I thought he was going to yeah, pick that, up originally to tell you the that truth. That was all effort, Peter. He should have been stopped at the line of scrimmage. But he kept moving them legs. He was able to get four yards out of the carry at least. So third and six will be on the horizon as we take a look at the replay. Yeah, Watterson doing a good job of remaining upright and moving forward. Third and six, Brockton. Ball at the 38 yard line of the Taunton Tigers. And Brockton gonna be facing the unique position of a fourth down now. They're in Taunton territory. We saw Taunton go for it in fourth down in Brockton territory earlier. Will Brockton elect to do the same? And it looks like Mike Norman, the quarterback, is talking things over with the coaching staff. And they're setting them back in seemingly for an offensive play. Yeah, you're inside the 40-yard line of your opponent's territory. The momentum is on your side. You've got a 18-point uh, lead, so why not? Spread wide receivers across the field. Shotgun formation for Mike Norman. Plenty of time. Over to Watterson. Complete first down. 
Watterson still on his feet, inside the 20, inside the 15. Excellent, excellent play by this Brockton Boxers offense. Yeah, Watterson, very elusive player. You'll see after he catches it, bounces off the, the defender right there, even his own man, and somehow breaks tackles and heads back up the field. So first and 10 for Brockton from the 15-yard line of the Taunton Tigers. That was a big play right there. That was third down, and uh, the boxers came through. Fourth down. Excuse me, yes, fourth down. Norman pitches the ball out to a ball carrier to the far side. Looks like he's going to be taken down right around the line of scrimmage. That was number 26, Noah Alau, on the carry. Yeah, Taunton was ready that time. So second and 10 boxers. Mike Norman up the middle of the quarterback keeper. Good for a couple of yards. Yeah, one of the linemen on the right side of that um, defensive line came right through his block and uh, pulled on the quarterback's shirt tail and was able to tackle him. Third down for the boxers now. Third and seven. Norman looking to pass, looks for the end zone, has an open man, Ted Tessa, for his second reception for a touchdown this afternoon. Touchdown. Brockton is on top, 27 to three, 519 left to go. The Norman to Tessa connection connects once again here in the second half. Yeah, you'll see it right here, Peter. Norman, nice pass. Bobbled it a little bit, but he hung on just as the defenders got to him for a touchdown. You know, this zone defense, if you will, that Taunton is playing. It's not working. Not working at all. There's guys five feet in front or five yards in front of Tessa, five yards behind him. But when Norman's hitting him dead center in the middle, it doesn't matter. Point after touchdown attempt is up, and it is good. 28 to three, Brockton with the lead. Five minutes and 19 seconds left to go in the third quarter, and as each and every player on this team has a sticker on their helmet this afternoon with the initials AC for Armin Colombo, the legendary boxers head coach who we've mentioned time and time again, passed away last weekend. I have to imagine if AC could see this game, he'd be pretty excited right now. Yeah, I, mean, I tell you what, I'm, I'm sure he's looking down where the sunshine is and smiling very nicely and proud of his, um, his, his coaches and his players coming out here and after defeat last week to um, play some really good football. So Brockman will kick off the Taunton with 519 left to go in the third quarter. On their first series of the game offensively, Taunton was able to march the ball down the field rather well, but they were held to a field goal. Yeah, Brockton's defense, like I said earlier, and after that field goal, Brockton's defense bent a little bit, but they did not break. And since then, they haven't even bent. Exactly. So the return man takes it shy of the 30. And I think um, hasn't it's been the I believe the second game of the season Brockton hadn't scored this many points since then. I could be wrong, but uh, it, it's it's been a tough ride for the offense after that uh, second game of the season. Well, I spoke in the first half of that message that head coach Peter Colombo had for his players before today's game alluding to his father's first season as head coach where they were blown out by New Bedford in game one and finished off the season with simply three wins before starting what would become a legendary dynasty. You know what? You didn't start this season particularly strong. You can finish it strong exactly. and we can build for next year. I think exactly. that's, the, that's the moral of that story. Catch by Danger for a first down. 
So first down, Taunton. Ball spotted at their own 39-yard line. And the man with the ball for the carry probably ran about 11 yards to ultimately be taken down either at the goal line or maybe a slight loss. Yeah, both times as, you, as, as he went to the wide, that was a sweep. And twice he had to cut back more to the outside because the lane was covered by a Brockton boxer, really nowhere to go. You can see where the first down, second down marker is now. Oh, the penalty. Right on the play against Brockton. And it's against Brockton for sure. I'm not sure what it is, but it's a significant penalty as they're moving the markers into boxer territory. Anybody up here in the press box see what that call was by any chance? I didn't see it. I was waiting for the referee to show us, but maybe we just missed it. We must have missed it. Lost on me. It's going to be first and 10 for Ton in Brockton territory at the 46-yard line of the boxers. And it's going to be a, oh, it was a face mask call. Thank you oh, for okay. the folks down the truck going back and giving us that call from the official. So face mask call allows a first down in Brockton territory for the Taunton Tigers offense, but they're not going to get very far in their first play from scrimmage post penalty. And this will bring up second down. The admission from the crew downstairs, they wanted that replay because they also missed it. We like honesty. I tell you, our crew down there in the truck is doing a great job today. Second down and nine for Taunton. Intercepted by the Brockton Boxers. That is number 32, taking it inside the 20, Aaron White. Yeah, Aaron read that perfectly. You'll see it here on the replay. I believe Aaron's playing safety and cuts right in front of the receiver. A beautiful job by Aaron. Takes it back into Tiger territory. He read that play perfectly yes, and he did. had that man covered perfectly. Yes, he did. Excellent play by Aaron White. Big defensive play for the boxers. And this is going to allow the boxers' offense to begin this series at the 20 yard line of the Taunton Tigers, already up 28 to 3. They could start to put the nail in the coffin late here in the third quarter with an entire quarter of football left to be played. Yeah, we've got three minutes in this third quarter. Looks like they might just put up some more points. Shotgun formation, Mike Norman, the quarterback for Brockton. He's gonna find himself in some trouble. He'll be taken down for a sack, or what will be recorded as a sack as they blow the whistle before he's actually down on the field, but that's going to be a significant loss for Brockton. But yep. nevertheless, they're still good field position nevertheless. Yeah, that, that was good coverage by Taunton. Um, Norman was looking to his left to pass, and before you know it, the pocket just closed right up on him. Nowhere for him to go. And like you said, Peter, a sack. One of the few sacks this evening or this afternoon by the Taunton Tigers. I think it's the first. So second down and 17 for the Brockton Boxers. Ball spotted at their, at the 27 yard line of ton. Shotgun formation again. And Mike Norman on the quarterback keeper. And he tries to inch closer towards the original line of scrimmage and uh, he'll be a few yards shy of that third and long on the horizon. Third and 12, game of five. if Brockton doesn't get the first down, if they can get it inside the 15, there's a good chance that um, they might put the um, field goal kicker out there and let him have a chance at uh, three points. Norman back to pass and looking for Watterson and he was well defended by the big man for Taunton, number 32. Yeah, he, he, incomplete. he might have, he almost made a great catch. See it right here with one hand, almost brought it in, but the defender knocked it out of his, uh, that one hand he was almost trying to catch it with. 
Brockton going for it in fourth down. Last time it went for it in fourth down, it worked out for them. Let's see how it plays out here. Actually, I'm seeing some substitutions. Maybe they're not going for it in fourth down. Yeah, Maybe I see, a I field see. goal? Uh, yeah, attempt? they're going to give them a chance. Oh, boy, we've seen him four for four with extra points today. Carlin's Gene going for the field goal. This is going to be a 40-yard attempt. Very rare at the high school level. Very rare. Carlin's Gene, a 40-yard field goal attempt forthcoming. Snap is good. Hold is good. And I think hey, yeah. a defender for Taunton got a hand on it. And that is going to be no good. Yeah, I think you're right. The um, defense got in there a little bit too soon. And somebody might have got their hands on it. <coughs> no fault of the kicker. But when you got a 28-3 lead, 45 seconds left in this third quarter, why not? So Taunton takes over the football at their own 23-yard line. And the Brockton wow. defense is going to take down the ball carrier pretty much as soon as he gets handed the ball. Yes, yeah, so you'll see it right here on the replay. The, the line just got right in there. Once, like you said, once he handed off the ball, running back was tackled. Go back. Was he more or less waved through by the offensive lineman? How did that happen? <laughs> Oh, yeah, he just went right through. <laughs> right through. Completely unblocked. I believe that was a linebacker. So the loss of four on the play, it is second down and 14 for Ton. Boy, this defense is really hyped up today, Peter. Well, if someone's going to hand you an hors d'oeuvre, I guess you eat, right? You eat. Third quarter, third quarter concludes. Brockton on top, 28-3. to three. They extend upon their lead in the third quarter with the second Michael Norman to Ted Tessa touchdown pass of the day. And 28 to three is your score. Brockton on top with 11 minutes of football left to be played. And for a Saturday afternoon, traditionally the games are not as well attended as Friday nights, but I have noticed that as this game has worn on, more and more people have shown up. And you see folks like Dan Buron in the crowd, who is the head coach for Bridgewater Raynham football and was always close with the Colombo family. And a lot of other folks, Brocktonians who played for Armin over the years. Song who are making their way out to this game on a Saturday afternoon. So it's nice that the crowd has actually gotten larger as the game has gone on. Yes, indeed. And it's a good game to be at. Brockton's looking sensational. Just goes to show you how 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 bad that um, Bridgewater Rainham wants to take that Thanksgiving Day game from Brockton. In Brockton, they got their coaches here just checking things out. It's a man of many talents, Dan Buron. He's a basketball referee, football coach. Is he really? Basketball referee. We see him at MIAA season, yeah, we'll see him. Calls the games fairly objectively as well, as far as I can tell. Doesn't seem to do anything against teams that could affect Bridgewater. That ball was a little bit tipped there by number 35 for the boxes.
ground goes Taunton again, and that's going to be another loss, bringing up fourth and maybe a marathon or something. <laughs> yeah, they're going to bring in the punting team. And to tell you the truth, I think Taunton's offensive line is getting a little bit tired out there, t taking a beating from that Brockton defensive line. They haven't let up yet, and I don't think they're going to let up. So fourth and 19. Taunton punts the football up, and that is going to fall out of bounds right around the 40-yard line. Well, while you have a chance, Peter, I'm going back to Armand Colombo and some of the stories, I can remember one, I believe I was a freshman, second semester of the year, and there was a little racial unrest up there at the new Brockton High, and um, something went down, a little fight or something, well, it's kind of a big fight, but I had respect for Colombo because Coach Colombo grabbed the white kids and met with the black kids, and um, Coach Gene... Colombo, excuse me, Coach Gene, well, right after this play here. Coach Gene, first and 10 for Brockton. And that Ooh. is the sophomore in a quarterback once again. We saw a little bit in the first half, Devontae Medley. He might be getting some more snaps with yeah. Brockton having a significant lead late in the game with a heavy lead. But going back to that incident, um, so and Coach Colombo grabbed um, all, all the white kids, and basically it was the, the boys, and Coach Gene Marrow, at the time he was coach, assistant coach of the football team, he grabbed all the um, the brothers and we all sat in one of the big fine arch rooms and um, we talked it out. And um, that right then and there, I really respected Coach Armand Colombo for what he did and Coach Gene Merrill for what he did to bring the two parties together and try to work out their differences. So Coach, coach Armand Colombo was also a great communicator with the kids. Are those two last names synonymous with Brockton, Colombo and Marrow? Uh. Yep, they're right up there. Eugene Marrow was the first principal okay. I had at Brockton High School. Well, I'm talking about oh. when I was a oh, student okay. here. Yeah. It was that, too, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was the principal for half the year, my freshman year, before oh, okay. Suzakowitz took over. Yeah, I can remember uh, Coach Gene. He was, uh, he was a gym teacher and also assistant football coach with uh, Armand Colombo for many years. And he's, he's out here every game since he'd retired cheering on his um, Brockton boxes. So it's a third down for Brockton. Devontae Medley hands the ball off to Watterson flag on the play in the back in the defensive backfield. Flag on the play. But of all the teachers, you had hundreds of teachers at Brockton High. And I'm not sure who the principal was at the time, but they chose Holding. Coach Armand Colombo oh. to bring the kids together along with Coach Gene Marrow to uh, work things out and find out their differences. That's the type of uh, person C Coach Colombo was. Everybody looked up to him. When he became the winningest head coach in Massachusetts high school football history, the media attention that he received in Brockton to see was fairly unprecedented for high school football at the time. Feature stories on broadcast television stations, Nesson. It was a big deal. I remember him telling me one time when we made a trip as this play is ruled incomplete, bringing up a fourth and long for Brockton. I remember we made a trip to New Hampshire to play Pinkerton Academy, which, by the way, is a rivalry I actually miss. I enjoyed the trip that we would make to New Hampshire every other year to Derry to take on Pinkerton Academy. And I remember him telling me after Pinkerton Academy, he's like, we did the math on the bus on the way down to the game. He goes, I actually think I broke the record a while ago, but some of those games must not have been recorded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we got fourth and incredibly long. Fourth and 14, and Brockton will be forced to punt the football away. One of the few times they had to punt the football. It's a beautiful punt. 
They're gonna call yeah. a flag. He did not fair catch it as far as I can tell, but is there an interfering with the catch? Yeah, rule? I think that's what it was. I think the Brockton player might have interfered just before he caught it. We'll see here in the replay. Ooh, that was close, but it was close enough. That was Aaron White. He had a pretty good interception early in the game, yeah, so we'll all is forgiven, Aaron. Yeah, all, all is, is forgiven. forgiven. Aaron White, you're a good man. Very aggressive. He was down there. Got down there very quickly. Up 28 to 3. No one's losing sleep on that one. Not at all. Last time I think I actually had a conversation with Armin Colombo, I randomly bumped into him at Twin River Casino in Rhode Island. Wow. As gracious as ever. Yeah, very gracious, man. He'd always say hi to you. Second and short. And, oh, ball carrier ripped down in the backfield. You're right. If, if Even though, like, I didn't play on the football team, but... If I ever ran into him and saw him in the hallway, he always nodded and said hello to you. Ton keeps it on the ground. That'll be good for a first down. Keeps the chains moving for them. There was a ceremony honoring Armin Colombo. Suppose this would have been 2004. As a historic Brocktonian, and it was held at the Massasoit Conference Center, which may have been Christos at the time, as we've got an interception. And what do you know with his second interception of the day? You're a good man, Aaron White. Interception number two by number 32. Another great Aaron catch White. and cover right there. He went up high for that football and caught it. Ran back. Very elusive when he gets the football. He's hard to tackle. Aaron White with his second pick of the day, and Brockton's offense will take over at the Taunton 40-yard line. And it will be Mike Norman back in at quarterback as they've gone back and forth between him and Medley at various times during this game. Yeah, the pass was a little bit overthrown to the designated receiver, but Aaron, Aaron White went right up high, could caught that football for, like you said, his second interception today with 525 left in this football game. So first and 10 boxes operating out of the shotgun. Mike Norman back to pass, looking over the middle, and that'll be picked off by Ton. It was a little out of the reach for the receiver off his hands and picked off by Taunton. So just as quickly as Brockton's offense takes the field, they come off the field and Taunton is back to pretty much exactly where they were. Yeah, it wasn't a great pass because it was a little bit too high. And the only reason that uh, Taunton play got that interception is because the receiver got his hands on it, trying to catch it. And the ball was tipped in the air. And the Tigers take advantage. First and 10 for Taunton, this will be. One of the few highlights this afternoon for the Taunton Tigers. Besides, uh, there was one fumble recovery early in the football game. They have not capitalized. They've not made much use of capitalizing on exactly. any opportunities they've had this afternoon. Going back to that story about the evening honoring Armin Colombo as a historic Brocktonian in the fall of 2004, as that pass is incomplete, bringing up a second and 10 for Taunton. It was the same night of what was game three of the American League Championship Series between the Red Sox and the Yankees. And the audience attention was split between the Red Sox game on a television out in the lobby and the ceremony for Armin Colombo. During the cocktail hour, it was completely on the Red Sox. And Armin was watching the Red Sox as well <laughs> as... 
we're going to have a third down and four fourth coming for Ton. And if you remember that American League Championship Series, the Red Sox went down three games to none to the Yankees in that series, and that third game was brutal. Brutal. The score was 20-something to, I forget, but the Yankees just absolutely positively embarrassed the Boston Red Sox to the point where, and oh, what a missed opportunity that yeah. was for Taunton. Bob was the football. That would have been a sure first down. First down, yeah. And that fourth. Was fourth down now, yeah. Fourth and four. And uh, while you're on the Red Sox, let's just congratulate the 2018 world champion Boston Red Sox. Absolutely. So I associate game three of that American League Championship Series with the Red Sox getting embarrassed by the Yankees with the same night that Armand Colombo was honored for being a historic Brocktonian. And that night, people were thinking, the Red Sox, there's no way they can come back and win four straight and go to the World Series after a performance like that. And sure enough, they did. Yeah. And we've got a flag. And it's going to be pass interference. I want to see a replay of that because number 12 for Brockton, Devin Forts, seemed to complain about that flag as soon as it was thrown. We'll pay attention to number 12. You can see in the bottom of your screen. Yeah, he's holding them. It wasn't a lot, but he held them enough. Not a lot, but enough, yes. yes. So that will give Taunton a first down and 10 with the ball spotted at the boxer's 45-yard line. And four minutes left. Now, that was not a good pass. He just kind of zipped it in there high, and it was low. He could have just not floated it over there, but he could have taken a little mustard off that pass. So the, you'll see it right here. So the uh, running back could – right there, he threw it low, and, yeah, that, that's a tough, tough catch. And this time the ball carrier right up the middle, good for a first down for Ton. You know, they, they talk about, they're talking in the sports world about is this the best Red Sox team in history? I mean, they won 108 games in the regular season. They had to beat the 100-win team of the Yankees. They had to beat the 100-plus team of the Houston Astros just to get to the World Series, and the Dodgers wasn't no pushover. I would not argue against that assessment of the greatest team in Red Sox history as a big, big sack courtesy of number 33 for the Brockton Boxes. Trayvon Cordado Goodwin, six foot tall, 185 pound senior, says, I'd like to eat you for lunch. <laughs> so second, and I don't want to do the math. How's that for the crew downstairs? Second and a hell of a lot. Two minutes and 57 seconds left to go. That is second in a marathon, I think. Yeah, on the scoreboard, they got second and 21. Quarterback draw. And he'll get back to the original line of scrimmage, it seems, even a little bit further. And timeout is called on the field. And it's called by Brockton? Yeah, they're calling it third down and 10. Yeah, he got back to the original line of yeah. scrimmage there. I thought he actually got a little, a little bit past further. it. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to be third down and 10 for Ton. So Brockton have a couple weeks off, and then we'll do the Thanksgiving football game right here at uh, Rocky Marciano Stadium on Armand Colombo Field. And <laughs> loose football. Brockton picks up on it. Brockton ball. And they will take over around their own 30-yard line. Yeah, you'll see in a replay just carelessness, carelessness by the um, receiver. Loses the football as he's tripping up. And I don't know, he's, he's looking like, what, what? Don't look at the referee, go after the football. 
And the fact that we've got two and a half, almost three weeks before the next time the Brockton Boxers play football, I have to tell you, I know we're five, six years into it now. I never was and still am not a fan of this current MIAA playoff system. Mm -hmm. I, I understand the intent, but I don't like it. Just takes away a lot of the excitement of Thanksgiving Day football. Well, Thanksgiving Day football, there's a lot of bowl game on the line. On the li yes. uh, spots on the line. Yes. Which, with all due respect to my friends at the Cape Cod Cafe, who are purveyors of fine calzones and pizza, I think that means more than the coveted Cape Cod Cafe cup they give back and forth every year on Thanksgiving. But hey, they have good pizza. Yes, they do. Incomplete pass. Let's stop the clock with less than two minutes to go. Buck 58 on the scoreboard. 28 to three is your score. Brockton on top. Brockton has actually not scored here in the fourth quarter. Only quarter of the entire game which they have not scored. They got a minute 58 to change that, of course. And they don't exactly have to show any urgency to do so because so. this win is well within hand. Well, there you go. as soon as I say <laughs> that, Amik Watterson says, hold my coffee. And he goes 57 yards. And no flags. For a touchdown, 34-3. Brockton on top with a minute 41 left to go. You'll see it right here. Nice hole. Breaks a tackle. And he's off to the races. Nobody's going to catch him. He broke one tackle, tackle. and out-sprinted everyone else. Exactly. He out-sprinted everyone else, showing his speed and power again. Amik Watterson with his second rushing touchdown of the day, and he has to have well over 100 yards at this point. Fantastic game by number 17, Amik Watterson, this afternoon. And a rare miss. Point after, no good. Well, 34 to three remains the score. Brockton on top. You know, if you're gonna give out a game ball to a member of the Brockton Boxers offense, Michael Norman, two passing touchdowns on the day and a rushing touchdown. His two passing touchdowns to Ted Tessa. Amik Watterson has run all over the field the entire day. You'd have many, many options of who you could give it to. I'd have to say co-MVP today with Norman and Watterson because Norman needed a game like this to um, lift his spirits and um, confidence. He had just he had a great game today, passing as well as running the football. On the defensive side of the ball, Aaron White, two yeah. interceptions on the day. Amanda Walker Jr. just manhandling guys on the field this afternoon. Just a great, solid, all-around all team effort by this Brockton Boxers team. And amongst names we didn't mention were a lot of the receivers who had a lot of good touches the football in the first half as well. I'm going to miss some names, but number 88, Navon Reed, looked very well out there in the game. We saw number 36, Derek Williams, very effective in this game as well. Just a fantastic, all-around, good, solid Brockton Boxers football game. Yeah, number 88. He had a good game. Yeah, that would be uh, Navon Reed. Yeah, that's who mentioned. That who you say? Okay. Malik Kiernan earlier as well. That's a big boy. Yeah. That is rumbling and bumbling with the football. <laughs> As you can see, the afternoon is near, and the um, shadows is starting to take over the field. Yeah, that sun going back and forth between clouds this afternoon has caused havoc for our cameraman, but they've done a great job. They really have. Aaron Tebow and Mike Simmons down in the truck. The legendary Isaac, the graphics guy. Yes. Trevor on camera. Just a fantastic team effort by our crew as well at Brockton Community Access. Yeah, Thank you, gentlemen. Definitely so. Hats off to our Cracker Jack production team. Cracker Jacks, they come with a toy in them if you <laughs> shake them up and dump them out. Tell you, when I was a kid, you had real toys inside the Cracker Jack box. You open up a Cracker Jack box, now you get a piece of paper. 
I don't remember the last time I had Cracker Jacks. I'm going to buy Cracker Jacks soon to see what comes with them. If they don't come with a yeah. toy, I'm writing a letter. I'm telling you, when I was a kid, and I'm Firing talking off in a the, tweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid in the, in the mid-60s, man, we, my father would take us up to Franklin Park and get a box of Cracker Jacks, and you get a whistle or some type of nice toy inside. Then somewhere along the line, it, times change. Nothing's the same. That's a shame. It is. That was the best thing about Cracker Jacks. Outside of baseball parks, where do they sell Cracker Jacks? Well, they sell Cracker Jacks in the stores now. They don't even have them in a box no more. They put it in a bag. Well, that's not right. No, it that's isn't. That's just not right. It isn't. I am firing off that tweet now that I know that. Yep, Mike the Postman just let us know. You get a little sticker inside. Well, that's I guess a piece of paper you're talking about. That's a piece about. of paper, yeah. I was so fresh, I just throw the piece of paper away. Another fine defensive player this yeah. afternoon for Brockton, Trayvon Cordado Goodwin. He's made some big plays today, including that one. Yes. 30 seconds left to go in this game. Yeah, it looks like it's a wrap. Head coach Peter Colombo down the sidelines. First game of your life that you coached. Without your dad. Without your dad present in any way, shape, or form otherwise in spirit. And yes. I have to say, job well done, Peter Colombo. Yes, job well done. This is for your dad. This definitely, this game is for Coach Carmen Colombo. 34 to three, the Brockton Boxers outplay, outwit, and outlast, and outclass this Taunton Tigers team. 34 to three. Your final score, and Miles, we've pretty much given a fairly good synopsis of how well Brockton played this afternoon. Any final words for our viewers before we let them go on this emotional afternoon? Big Brockton boxers win, first game in the wake of the passing of the legendary Armory Colombo, and they put forth a performance like this. Well, it's just nice to see the offense come out and really click on all cylinders. It was nice to see the defense come out and click on all cylinders. Just in all, we, we named all these players, just had great games. It's just a great team effort. And that's what Coach Armand, Armand Colombo would want. Just a great team effort. Come out here and do the best you can. Well coached football game by Peter Colombo. Well played football game by offense, defense, and special teams. Your final score, the Brockton Boxers 34, the Don Tigers 3. For the entire crew here at Brockton Community Access, whose names you see on the screen, my broadcast partner, Miles Jackson, we'll see you next time. Enjoy the remainder of your day. Farewell.